the sermon by Jimmy Smith. Actually, I wasn't playing bass then. I was a trumpet player. And uh, we were trying to learn uh, flamingo. Lee Morgan played, was in that band on the sermon, and he, he played flamingo. And so me and my friend were trying to learn flamingo, and so we were listening to flamingo, and then just flipped the record over and heard the sermon. That record influenced me very, very much to be a bass player, although I didn't yet. It still took maybe three or four more years before I started playing the bass. Uh, mainly, I played guitar right before I played bass. And all I did was play, back in the 50s, you didn't hear much bass on records in R&B. You would hear another guitar player playing, playing lines like... They have a one guitar playing that, and they have another guitar player. You know, so they had two guitar players. The band that I was in had three guitar players and a drummer, lead singer, uh, and he played lead guitar. His wife played back, uh, she sang background, and she played rhythm guitar, and I played single note patterns on the guitar. Um, so, did I answer your question? Yeah. I, I keep I, yeah. talking so much that I forget what I'm... Right. Willie Hutch, who by the way is a Dallas native, and he was a Motown producer. I respected Willie so very much. He was just, you know, I, I, I didn't, probably did maybe four or five sessions uh, with him, or maybe I did a project with him. I wish I could have worked with him more and more and more, but I would say Willie Hutch, Gary Katz, a good producer, Quincy Jones, very good producer. Um, I, I remember when you asked that question, I think of those three people, very good producers. I think that what I'd like to do, um, see, I, I'm strange that way because I'm Gemini. And one side of me likes R&B and funk. The other side likes jazz. Both I've had, I've spent time in just jazz. I've spent time in R&B and funk and pop, per se. I sort of like to, would, um, with the proper budget, I like to hire, the, uh, 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 hire my choice of musicians to do an album of music that crosses the board. The album that I'm doing now is uh, a good crossover jazz R&B record. It can go jazz or it can go R&B. So I kind of think that uh, I would probably head more for the same kind of thing, a crossover record that's jazz and R&B. Um, I'm not a great singer, but I do have a style. And, um, uh, and I do enjoy singing this record I'm singing. And uh, I don't think that I could do two hours <laughs> singing every night um, because I have not been that kind of a singer during my career. Same background, but not lead vocals. So I kind of think the kind of record that I would make would be something that's a little bit of everything that crosses over the market because the radio is still very, very important to people that are making music. So I would do somewhat like I'm doing now except put a little jazz flavor into it and change the groove so that it's not specifically funk or it's not specifically R&B. Although I, I was born and raised on R&B, so like I do like R&B. Um, but I have not been able to sing uh, and play much R&B at the same time. Uh, the few songs that I do is only two or three that I can sing and play. Maybe as time goes by, I'll be a better singer and being able to play it too. The bass can't stop, you know. So I kind of think I would make a record that would take care of everything. Well, it's a, um, the music is, uh, I, I, I'm doing four cover songs, maybe five cover songs from the past that were hit records, except that I do them in a different flavor. A little bit more, I don't use the original uh, groove uh, or tempo. Uh, my New York years and my years living in New York, sort of, I came up in New York sort of playing something a little different. Playing the same song that's a hit, but playing it in another groove, another flavor. This record is that way. And then I have uh, 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 five originals the same way. I enjoy doing it because I've never done a record where I'm singing. Um, 
I've been told over the years that I had a voice, but I know that I'm not a great singer. I do have a character and a quality um, uh, to do certain things, so I got to be careful about what songs I choose uh, so that I can sing them and play the bass at the same time. Um, because I have not yet developed into being able to do both clearly. So I have to be very careful in what I choose to sing. But this record basically is uh, somewhat uh, like I uh, mentioned a little bit earlier. It's a crossover. It crosses over R&B and it will cross over into the jazz market. So it will do a jazz station and it will also do an R&B station and maybe some uh, funk stations. Because uh, the title is Interpretations of a Groove. Um, and I have different interpretations of uh, the groove of, uh, of each song. Uh, I'm very excited about it, and I can hardly wait until I'm finished. Uh, I'm almost finished now. I'm looking for December 1st. Wrong time to finish the record, by the way. But I'm looking for uh, the next couple of weeks uh, to be able to uh, market the record and, uh, and get another career going. You know, every now and then I'll do a Chuck or any bandstand, but it's never uh, to the likes of what I do as a hybrid sideman, which I enjoy doing. I will always be a, a good sideman for uh, artists that I really respect, you know, and, and they really respect me. I'll always be a good sideman. Uh, I hope to be as good of a uh, frontman as I think I am a sideman. I hope, you know, maybe cross my fingers, you know. I think uh, this is November now. I'm looking forward to going uh, to Japan in April. Every summer I've gone to Japan. I've been going to Japan every year now since 1972. And uh, sometimes twice a year. Uh, next year it looks like I'm going to go twice a year. But uh, the Molina Shaw um, Dream Team Tour is what they call it. Uh, it usually happens in July or August. And that's going to happen again as long as we all stay alive and healthy. And, uh, and then I'm going to Japan in April uh, to do some Chuck Rainey bandstands, you know, with friends, you know, you know, that are there. So I'm really looking forward to that. I like Japan a whole lot. Um, have a lot of great friends there. So I can hardly wait. I can hardly wait.